the bed we want to be able to take this up and down easily so you can see it's built on just a frame of one by aluminum one by tube and then uh, two by fours we built the frame and the chassis then with drawer slides so that way it just slides down like that the other reason I like this design was that it would give us a functional seat in the back so when we go places we've went then to the beach and to uh, a lake and we've sat and ate lunch and you can just sit and enjoy the lake and sit here and, and underneath the shade and out of the rain even and sit and enjoy a view and have a nice time to relax with this seat is you can actually access the stow and go seating again by flipping this up and now you've got access to all this which this is a large storage so your suitcase have to be a little shorter but they still fit in fully so a carry-on suitcase no problem fits in there a cooler fits in there so forth <laughs> build a frame for each of the panels in the, the bed, the four panels. So I decided to make those out of aluminum and then put a wood base in. Out of the aluminum, I use one inch square tubing. Now this stuff is readily available. I would bet most every Home Depot or Lowe's, Menards, whatever will have these Ace Hardware, Farm and Fleet in our town has a rack full of three foot you know, sticks of it, four foot sticks, six foot sticks, eight foot sticks, depending on what you need. One inch square aluminum tube and then one inch L angle is the vast majority of what this was built out of. For the corner braces, I just used sheet aluminum. And again, this is available at Farmer Fleet Menards. And then I use these for the corner braces. You have the, the design. I mean, it's going to be a, a square tube with an aluminum L angle on it. And then I can take the wood and put it in between. So I'm building a box, and the wood then goes in between. So for the corners then, butting them together like so. Taking with those butt together, taking a, the triangle piece then here, and just joining it in like so. So it's fairly simple as far as some structure goes. It's fairly simple to do. Now, if you're thinking about how do I cut this and so forth, it is extremely simple to cut that. There's plenty of ways to do it. The simplest is literally tin snips. This aluminum cuts very easy with tin snips. They have left-handed, right-handed, ones that are made just to go straight as far as that goes. Very simple to do that, okay? It is not difficult to cut this out of here, okay? Now, you can go further. You can get a little nibbler like this, and basically this, you plug it in, and it nibbles right through the material and cuts then longer shapes, bigger shapes, so forth. If you want to get further up than that, I use a shear to do it. It is just a hand shear. Um, it is not a power shear. Basically, you put the metal in, pull the shear down, and it cuts. It's fairly simple and fairly straightforward. It always leaves a little bit of an edge there, so you want to then put a little sand on that so that way it's not sharp to, your, to touch. Another little uh, tip then in cutting the aluminum tube. You know, that can be cut, I mean, hacksaw. Very simple. I do tend to use the chop saw the most because it gives me a square cut, but if you don't have a chop saw, again, no problem. But if you're going to cut this then with a hacksaw, the biggest problem is just keeping this square. Use a square, mark off where I'm going to mark off on each side. And then when I put it in the vise, I will saw on one edge, not all the way, and get it all the way through, but not down the side, flip it over, saw again, flip it over, saw again, flip it over, saw again. And that way, you get a nice square cut at the end. You're going to then need to do a little bit of filing on the edge, whether it be with a hand file. There you go. So a little bench sander like so, which again, you just then can take this and do it a few times, and that squares it off nicely so you get a nice fit. Without this, you could do it with a file. You could do it with, you know, even sandpaper, just something to take the edges off. If you do a very good job making it square, it puts together a little nicer. So now, and these aren't the size obviously, these are just pieces that I had here, but now you've got your basic structure put together. You, I've got it flipped over so you're looking at what would be the bottom of it. And use your square. Um, a larger square is better, okay, just because of the fact that you're covering a larger area. Put that in there, then you put your, your piece on here, your brace, okay, and then you're going to rivet and bond this together somehow. And then you mark out where you're going to put your rivets at, okay, every few inches here, and drill your hole through, basically rivet them together. Now, to bond it together, rough up the edges here. Uh, this has still got the protective film on it, so you take that off, but rough up your edges. 
and you can use pretty much any any epoxy. This is steel weld, okay? It is something I just picked up at Farm and Fleet. It's an epoxy, so basically you break off the tubes, you mix it together, you mix it together then, and then you put it on what you're gonna bond together. This one sets up pretty quick. So things you wanna look at. You wanna look at the set time, okay? So how fast it will then start bonding together. The quicker that is, the quicker you have to be in putting it together. Cure time is then how quickly you can then work with it, and then it'll have some sort of strength, okay, um, to, to decide how strong it will be. And then all dries in a dark gray, which again, I, and I don't care what the color is afterwards, this is not something that's seen very much. Rivets, we get rivets through McMaster Car. And then you'll look up the rivets based on what size the hole you're gonna drill, and then what the grip distance is. And that's depending on, again, how much material you have. So this material plus the eighth inch here gives you then the, the grip distance. A drill, drill your hole, okay, and then you place the rivet inside and you pop the rivet, okay. I do use blind rivets, meaning they're capped on this side. They're a little stronger, um, but, and they're also, they don't let water through back, but we use those for other projects, so I have them here, that's why I use them for this one. Can use a hand riveter. These will pull with a hand riveter. Regular open end rivets will pull with a hand riveter. We do use a pneumatic riveter. That's what I tend to use on these type of products. As long as you have a, you know, air compressor, you put air to it, put the rivet in, and then pull the trigger and it rivets it for you. They're not terribly expensive tools. Um, they're not something everybody would have, but again, for this type of project, if you're gonna invest this in building a van, you know, it's not that much to invest another little bit in some, you know, saws and hand tools. So now let's say you've got all that done, you've got basically a box, okay, and it would end up being, you know, set up something like so. Now you just have to mount then the L angle inside, okay? And the same type of thing, you just cut it to fit, mount it, drill through, and I did it, you know, every, you know, three or four inches, and I just drilled through and then riveted, well, again, added the epoxy and riveted it together. And I did this along here. I did not cut a fancy angle at this junction here. I just put another piece right in there. The fox together, riveted together for the corners to add some dimensional strength this way. The L angle here, which is what then the OSB is gonna sit on. So this is then what we use then for the seats, okay? It is subfloor. It's, it's OSB, it's three quarter inches. We did have a question about degassing and sometimes th this does degas and smell. Um, I don't know if it's just because we had had it for a while and it sat in the garage and it already degassed, but it's, we've never had any issues with them with odor. But you can see, you cut it then to fit inside the box and then it fits like so, okay? And because this is three quarters of an inch, the height of the aluminum is one inch, and then the aluminum L angle is an eighth of an inch, it leaves you in an eighth of an inch then here that this is proud of this by one eighth of an inch, which I like that fact because then I could fill this part of it then with a hard rubber surface so that way it's, it's, it's comfortable to, to, to work with and so forth and then it gives you another, just each layer, the hardest, a little bit softer and then the, the cushion on top hopefully helps gives you a nice cushion or a nice effect that it gets stiffer as you go down to the bottom. To attach this, nothing more than drilling holes in here and I use stainless steel, um, just regular pan head screws and then screwed them through there. Again, all the stuff is available at Menards, your local hardware store, we'll have all of these things and basically drill the hole into the aluminum and screw it straight in then to the, to the uh, OSB. Now then you have to put these all together and to make them the, the platform. You have to hinge these together. Uh, I realize this is not complete. This is just hopefully for demonstration purposes, enough that you can understand what I did. And simply, I butted these, these pieces together. And to get them, well, actually, I went, did go a little out of order, sorry. I built these and I drilled them out and, and got to where they could be mounted, but then I took the, the OSB back out because then I could take this and clamp it all together so it was tight as it could possibly be. And then I used a piano hinge. I just used a piano hinge that goes along the full length of it. And then the piano hinge, um, I, again, I riveted it. So I put the piano hinge, I marked out the holes that I was gonna use and I did not use all of them. I used every third, I believe. And every so many, I drilled it through and riveted it then together. So the piano hinge now is riveted to the whole structure, which allows it then to fold. And then remember, since this is folding different ways, the one in the back, the hinge is on the top because it folds this way. The one in the middle, the hinge is on the bottom. And that's again, because it folds this way, 
this hinges in on the top, okay? So now you've built your boxes, okay? So you cut your frame out, each little piece, and then you put those together and then use then the corner brace on it. So then that's now riveted together. So now you've got a square. Took the aluminum L angle, put it on the inside all the way around, and you did that three times. An 18 inch piece, 20 inch piece, 20 inch piece. Now this is where I built then the entire piece here. That's the next thing to talk about. That was actually incorrect. This is not one solid piece. So I built it and I put all four panels together and realized then I had a problem. And that is because I didn't account for the fact that flipping this up to gain access to the trunk or to the storage underneath the rear seat, that the with the foam on here and the foam on here, I couldn't just fold that up. Okay. Now, if you take this foam off and take that foam off every time, then I could, and that would be just fine, and it actually would give you more access to the storage underneath. But I didn't want to have to pull off the foam off of each of them. This one I designed so it would flip up and it's uh, snapped in place, and then you can push it up, but I had to leave room then on this part for the foam that goes here. But, so to do that then, I had to leave a another piece here, okay, and it ended up being four inches wide because I have three inches of foam and one inch then for the folding mechanism. I ended up leaving a four inch solid piece here and I just built it out of wood and then connected it between. So I ended up then with, instead of four panels, it technically ends up being five, although these, this one here is just wood and solid and stays on its own and doesn't fold, leaving me then with a 12 inch piece that does fold up. So I had to take this one and cut it back down to 12, piece, 12 inches. So now again, you've got an 18 inch, 20 inch, 20 inch, and then a 12 inch with a four inch stationary part. Frame itself, the part that you're gonna sit on, um, and now you have to put then something under it to mount the frame then to the floor. The numbers I gave were what I built exactly for the Dodge Grand Caravan. If you're using something other than that, obviously you have the idea on how I built it, just remeasure and come up with your own distances. If you need a longer bed, the pieces will be longer, wider so forth whichever. But now I have to figure out how to put it into the van and what height I'm going to put it in. I just set it in there and the frame without any cushioning on it and I set it in place and I put two by fours underneath it and I just kept stacking them up and sitting on it until I came up with a comfortable height between where you could sit, your legs could go over nicely and you weren't hitting your head. But I put it to the ground I made out of wood and that's simply because it was easy to then just cut and put it in there and then trim it and put it back in and so forth. Because I built it out of two by fours, it was just very easy to cut and it gave a nice platform for it to sit on. And it ended up being, it's about four or five inches is what the total height off of the floor of the van. What it has then, the solid piece that had to be left in here and that I did out of wood, that is actually then it worked out very well because that's what then I used to build the, the rest of the chassis for, okay? You can, it has then a two by four running this way and another one running this way, and I screwed them right in then to this solid piece of wood that I had here. That then is what leaves then uh, the ability for the drawer slides then to do this. You have one sticking out on each side here that connect all the way to the back. Then what I did is I had those in there, and I put then another two by four, okay, with just the width of the drawer slide left between them, and I put that then screwed onto this front piece here by itself. So now that moves independently of these other two that are mounted then to the back. It is just as simple as this part here. Sides floor and there it creates a bed. And then the reverse to put it back together. this flat to figure out how much distance it has when it folds down. So starting from here, where do the two by fours meet? All the way flat, how far is that? It ended up being 28 inches. So then I needed a 28 inch drawer pull. They make drawer pulls and I bought mine off of eBay. They make drawer pulls that rated up to 500 pounds. 500 pound rating, there should be space a little closer to get the full 500, but even at 400 pounds, Christine and I can both be on that without going past the weight rating of that. So now I have a functioning bed, frame that we built, OS speed base, the eighth inch rubber glued, I just glued it on there, I just used 
you know, contact cement. The chassis that it slides back and forth on, back here on the, where this solid piece is, that turns out to be right about where the end of the trunk is. And so I just then mounted that and put it, put little blocks under there. They ended up being very short because it's already sitting up on two by fours under there. So that way it would mount, have something to mount onto. To mount it then to the van, I took a turnbuckle and I put a, uh, a, an anchor then into the two by four, the, the non-moving two by four, the anchor that the rear seats were mounted to. I just put a bolt back in there, put an eye hook on it, and then connected it together. Then you can use the turnbuckle to turn it down and pull the entire bed down into the van floor, which makes it very stable. Because these here, the ones, again, the ones that are not moving, go all the way out to the very back. They actually bridge the entire trunk area. And then, and we'll show you again in the video, that built, they bridge the entire area so that way they sit on the back. So now you've got a piece extending from all the way to the back of the van, all the way into the van, and pulled down. That's enough actually to mount the entire thing to right there. I did go a little bit further than that, and on the front side of it then, where the 2x4 is in, you had to obviously mount some feet in there because the van slopes down. I mounted feet into there. From there, I took another square tube of aluminum, attached it to each side, and then it goes across. It basically just by chance mounted up and matched up with then the latches that are in the floor, the metal hooks in the floor that the seats latch onto, and I just put a hose clamp around it and clamped it to the floor. Hey, if you made it this far, congratulations. Comment below with a van emoji that you are getting it or starting to understand it. I know it might take a little couple of times to review. Listen to the concept and design behind it because you might think of other things. And now part three will actually have footage of the va under the belly of the bed and that you'll understand maybe a little bit more because I was even, I didn't know there were certain things there um, when we first videoed it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, thumbs up that you actually like this video, and I will see you next week. Later.